What's up, Instagram? How we doing? It's Greg here at Fisherman's Headquarters. Just want to check in with you on this evening and uh, see how things are going. So first things first, wanted to say hello and I wanted to talk about a fishing reel um, that I've been playing around with for, for some time now. It is the Pen Clash 2. So basically, for anybody who doesn't know, um, Fisherman's Headquarters is a pen warranty center. Uh, we see lots of reels, lots of problems, and um, you know we kind of just repair stuff and fix broken things and help people kind of get things back going. Um, so because of that, I see some issues you know, with, with reels and kind of give some feedback to Penn. And over the years with um, that kind of relationship, that back and forth, uh, Penn has put me on their field test program. I'd say it's been um, probably about five years now, maybe six years, uh, field tested the Torque series they came out with, the, the all metal surf reel, uh, the Slammers, the SSVs, uh, I should say the VIs, um, Clash 2, the original Clash, and a number, number of other reels. So I uh, just wanted to kind of share some things about this reel. Um, I got it, uh, when did I get this reel? Um, May 1st, 2019. So it's kind of a coincidence that it's uh, exactly a year ago today. Um, so that's pretty cool. I actually didn't, didn't plan on that. I just actually pulled up this email from Justin who used to be in the field test program and he just this is an email he sent to me saying hey here's some reels we're going to send you um let us know what you think so basically first and foremost um for anybody who doesn't know about the clash series from pen the clash is some of the they're, they're kind of light tackle um not super high end not super cheap it's kind of right in that mid-range price point right around 200 dollars, 250 um it's going to be an all metal kind of kind of build, um, but there are some spots where they kind of reduce some weight. So there are some reels that are all carbon, and those reels would be like a Stratic from Shimano. Um, some of those reels would be like some, some Daiwas, uh, like the Ballistic is, is one of them. Um, one of their new ones would be the Luviest, which is kind of brand new to the market. That would be, um, you know, kind of that, those carbons that are, that are, that are much, much lighter uh, bodies which would be here, uh, much lighter rotors. And with that, you know, they, they go up in price point and, and, and such. But a lot of times those carbons have flex. And with flex and, um, you know, kind of some, some higher drag pressures and braided line, you start getting some, some tweakage uh, and some flex. And what happens is you've got a main gear, which uh, is driven by the handle. Main gears in here, uh, circular, would spin this way. And you've got a pinion gear, which drives the rotor, which is this way. Um, and the two, pinion and, and this main gear, uh, this spins, uh, mate. And what happens is when there's flex, those two don't align that nicely. And what happens with the flex is you'll start to see um, some vibration, some wear in those gears that are, that are kind of um, not, say, aligned. And you'll get premature, like a rough riding reel. And you'll start to hear like a coffee grinder sound, something like that. So one of the things that I just want to mention about this reel is it's, it's an all metal body. And yes, some people are like, oh, a lightweight reel should, should have a carbon body. And yeah, there, there's arguments for that. Um, but Penn decided to go with the all metal body to keep it as strong as possible. Uh, yeah, th th there's a little sacrifice in weight there, but this reel is for its size it is pretty light. I, I don't know the exact weight numbers off the top of my head. I can look up to this email that I got here originally. Uh, as far as yard capacities and, and weights and all that. But to me, that's really not the important stuff. Um, the important stuff is where do reels fail? And maybe some people are on here. I haven't looked at the comments yet, but maybe some people are on here might say, hey, I've had a spinning reel and I've had a reel fail and this was my problem. And without seeing any of them, I mean, feel free to fire them in there and say, yeah, I've had issues with this or this or this. Um, you know, feel free to reach out and say, hey, these are problems I've had. But I would be willing to bet that it was a line roller failure. Line roller's right there. Uh, there's a little bearing inside of that line roller. And when you're cranking line on, obviously the line is, is always traveling over that roller, being fed back on the spool. Um, the line's wet and in salt water, that, that salt kind of gets caked up in there. There's a little seam. I'm not really sure how, sure how good you can see that. Uh, there's a little seam in there and that bearing gets wet. And then over time, gets kind of crusty, gets rusted, eventually that bearing fails. That's a very, very common issue. 
Now that's a common issue on a $20 reel. That's a common issue on a $1,000 spinning reel. Um, line rollers, definitely um, a, a, a very, very important little part of a reel that, that you should keep track of. Um, if you haven't serviced your reel this winter and you're kind of fishing this spring, or maybe you did service and you say, hey, you want to give it a little bit of love, um, drop a little bit of oil in there, light, light oil, three-in-one oil, uh, pen makes a little oil. You could use a little super lube, just about anything. Keep that line roller lubed and um, you, you should have good long range service. So that's one failure point in a spinning reel. Um, another failure point is the anchor reverse. So anchor reverse is the clutch system that makes the reel uh, stop when you kind of set the hook or if you're jigging. Um, it's this kind of back play that you would see in an older school reel that you don't see anymore in the modern reels because they use what's called a one-way clutch system, which is because of the design of a, the use of a one-way one clutch roller bearing, also known as a needle bearing. Um, so that's kind of like an inner reverse uh, AR bearing. Sometimes you'll see like a uh, CC for corrosion resistant or, or CR um, AR and a reverse in, in, in kind of, um, you know, in the, in the specs of, of different reels. So those would be kind of two common places that I see reels fail. And that could be any price point, any reverses and line roller. And I guess I should dive into a little bit because I explained the line roller, kind of what goes on while there's water getting there. And one of the things with the anti reverse system is that steel needle bearing. Um, it's basically a bearing with these needles inside of it. And there's a shaft that runs through it. And that shaft is actually your pinion. Um, and what happens is, the the roller bearing allows the, the 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 turn or the spin of that part in one direction, but stops it in the other direction. So it gives you a the ability to turn, but when you want to set the hook, uh, when you want to retrieve line and and then stop and jig, um, it stops that rotor from coming backwards. Um, the only other system there is in spinning reels would be in dog a dog and ratchet system, which is very very old school. If you're familiar with the old BG series from Dio, if you're familiar with, uh, say, the old Z series, even the old Slammer SS series, um, those you'll, ha you'll have like a slap back, a slap, 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 as you retrieve and kind of give it one of these. Um, if you see here, this is a infinite inner reverse. There's no section where there's back play to slap, slap back. That's very common on, on modern reels. It's nothing special about this one. So... First and foremost, I just wanted to kind of poke into a couple spots here of reels and say, where do reels fail? What problems will you see? I mean, you buy a reel today, uh, you're not buying it expecting it to, to fail, um, but the realization is reels break, right? Um, I mean, everything in life you buy, it, it eventually breaks if it's not maintained. And even if it is maintained, uh, sometimes there's a useful life and, and things fail. So that needle bearing, going back to that, um, which is steel, um, salt, steel, no good. You get some rust in there. So yes, there's, there's arguments. Why, why don't people use, or why don't real companies use uh, a different style bearing, a different type of, of bearing and quantum for some time used some, some magnetic anti reverses. They also used some magnetic bales, uh, on their Boca series that was out and also the Cabo series, which was out a few years back. Uh, it was a very, very popular reel. It was one of the best sellers for a long time. Um, it was a great reel, De definitely a really, really good reel. The magnetic systems, um, to me, they worked great when they were new. Once you got some salt and some gunk in there, those magnets kind of weren't um, really standing up to what they were, what they kind of claimed to do. You still had some inverse failures, you still had bail failure, failures. Um, so I, I don't know of any other reels that kind of jumped on that bandwagon. And as Matt just mentioned, he's had a cu couple Cabos fail. So that was really the Cabo and the Bocas, and that's from Quantum. That was really their, their, their name to the game. Um, when they first started releasing those reels is that they are using these magnetic uh, systems to jump ahead in, in technology and get away from some of these other failures, which would be the dog and ratchet, uh, and also the one-way clutch uh, steel needle bearing in a reverse system. And the magnet just didn't do it. So it's still to this day, the dog and ratchet is found in reels. Um, what you'll find is some reels actually use both systems. Sometimes you'll hear of a, a dual anti-reverse system or a triple anti-reverse system. Um, triples most of the time would be in bigger game lever drag reels. You'll see the use of two or three dogs. I believe a, a vet accurate 
Um, I know Penn in the new internationals, they use two. Even the old ones, they use two. Um, and when I'm, when I'm doing this weird little thing, there's, there's two ratchets and, and dogs. Um, so when it goes around, it, it grabs in two points to distribute that load evenly. If you're going to add a third, it's almost like a peace sign. You'd have two here and then one on the top on, in this circular gear that would grab to give a reverse. So what, what it is, is if one fails, there's another backup. Um, but that being said, most reels, modern reels today, talk about, uh, from Penn, the battles, the fierces, um, the clashes, the clash two, uh, even the slammers, the SSVIs, all of those reels use a steel needle bearing. Um, you want to jump into, say, Daiwa. Um, you've got the BG, the ballistic. Um, I mean, there's so many, so many reels, but the saltist, all those reels also use a steel needle bearing. Um, with that said, Daiwa uses mag seal to seal off that bearing and to protect that bearing, that one-way clutch bearing, and to prevent failure or, or water intrusion to the steel needle bearing, which steel, water, salt, corrosion, rust, failure. Um, so just to, to kind of give you a little lay of the land and some reels and what they're doing, um, I, I wanted to kind of describe that. Hopefully I didn't go too far off topic of this reel. Just wanted to kind of describe uh, what companies are doing, what, 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 what's failing. Um, and kind of what you should expect if you buy a reel and say, you know, why should I spend a hundred dollars? Why should I spend 200 or why should I spend three, four, 500? And, and every system is, is kind of a different price point depending on the manufacturer um, and kind of what they feel that it, it's, it should be priced at. So why don't I jump back to this reel um, and describe a couple of things. The Clash is a super, super nice reel in the two to 250 price point. Um, personally, I don't think you're gonna find a better reel at that two to 250 price point in the smaller light tackle game. Um, I think that Daiwa, when they came out with the Back Bay series, was kind of in that same direction, kind of going at that same, you know, kind of place. Um, that would be one of my other reels that I would suggest that would be kind of stand up against this. I personally feel this reel is much, much better than the Stratic. Just my opinion. I'm not the biggest Shimano fan. I've had any reverse failures. Um, I have gear failures. And that's what pushed me away from Shimano. Uh, Shimano's a great company. I love the Stellas. I love the Trinidads, the, the Talicas. Also, you know, you got to keep, keep maintenance up on them because they do have bearing issues as well. Uh, all reels are going to have bearing issues if you don't take care of them. But personally, in the more affordable uh, line classes, the Pen, in my opinion, makes a better durable reel in that $100 to $200 price point. Uh, Max works the shop. He reached out and said, oh my God, he's a huge Shimano fan. Uh, I'm all about people that love Shimano. That's cool. Personally, I'm not. Uh, I just had bad news with him. And my personal opinion, my personal uh, experiences kind of sway me in a different direction. Uh, Max would probably totally disagree and it would sway him in a different direction. He fishes, you know, Stratix and Saragosas and, and that's cool. Um, Matt, again, reached out to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm stoked that you're, that you're interacting here. He, he was pushed away from Shimano due to bad parts availability. That's another thing that Penn really has um, going for him is they like to offer uh, that service so when you have an issue, you can fix it. Um, so let me dive into this reel here. So the Clash series has always had the Penn HT100 drag. That's a carbon drag, um, nothing special. The older reels had carbon fiber drags. Um, HT100 stands for heat temperature 100. It's basically the rating of the drag material they use, which is carbon. What's up, Kevin? Thanks for the thumbs up, dude. Stoked you're uh, jumping on. Um, the HT100 drag washer is a phenomenal drag. They use it in the Penn International Series for tuna and sharks and marlin. Um, it's used in a bunch of different spinning reels. It's stood the test of time for many years. Carbon drag washer is probably the best uh, in terms of long range service, um, heat kind of resistance, durability, and even they're, they're very good when they're wet. Uh, another drag material that would be good was, is ceramic. Not a lot of people use it anymore. That was something that Quantum also did with ceramic drag washers. It was kind of a fad, and I don't know if anybody's actually doing that now. Um, maybe somebody out there knows there's reels make, you know, made with uh, ceramic drag washers. But H200 drag washers are like the standard from Penn. They've done it for many years. The drag on this reel is phenomenal. It's the same drag that you could have gotten in the, the Clash 1. So the Clash 2, same drag. All right, that's all covered. As far as the bale, the bale is tubular. Um, a tubular bale is, in my opinion, better than a uh, wire bale. Um, 
I just feel that the transition that they can get with the bail uh, here, which is sort of the wire, but it's not a wire, it's tubular, into this part of the bail, which transitions into the line roller, is much, much smoother and streamlined in here. And it might not seem like a big thing, but that's one of the first things I look at a reel to see how refined it is. And you'll see cheap reels have a very wonky or bumpy transition here where the line is always gonna travel on this to find and seat itself on the roller, which is here. Uh, so like I said, it's one of the spots I really like to look on a reel to see how refined the, the machining was or the part is, um, you know, when I'm first checking the reel out. So I really like that tubular bail wire. I like how it transitions into, into the roller. To me, that, that's really sweet. Um, one of the advantages that the Clash 2 has is a seal here. Um, I believe it's called hydrophobic, and that's what Max just put on there with the eyeballs. Um, they use a hydrophobic bearing. I mean, they want to use fancy words, that's cool. It's basically a sealed bearing. There, there's a seal in here, and it's protecting that salt water from intruding. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sorry, it's protecting that bearing from salt water intrusion. Um, that spot's always getting wet. That's where it needs to be. Um, pen saw it they, and, and they, they took action. So it's something that if you wanted to look at the pen clash one, pen clash two, the two is going to have the sealed, sealed line roller bearing. Um, one other thing that the pen clash two has is the clutch armor. That's the other part I was talking about earlier, just a few minutes ago about the anti reverse roller bearing having, um, potentially problems in, in a lot of different spinning reel brands and series. The clutch armor system is a sealed uh, annual reverse roller bearing. It's just like what Daiwa is doing with the mag seal. It's not mag seal because mag seal is proprietary to Daiwa. Um, but it's Penn's version of a sealed um, pinion bearing. And that would be, I shouldn't really use the terminology pinion, bear, pinion bearing. A lot of times pinion bearings on the underside of the pinion. Um, the clutch roller bearing is sealed and they use the kind of name clutch armor so it's basically their kind of brand name or their um kind of trademark to that feature um and what that's going to do is it's going to give you more durability on the clutch system which is a very very great spot where you want durability um your interverse goes the reel's basically shot so hopefully those two features right there can tell you that this reel if you're going to look for spinning reels in the two to 250 price point, this is one to definitely check out. Um, there's a couple other things there that, that also uh, might kind of get under the radar of most, but what they did is they slowed the oscillation. So if you know what oscillation is, oscillation is when the spool travels up and down, how much it throws from top to bottom. So as I spin this, the reel, um, the rotor turns, and what happens is, the oscillation system, which is made of the oscillating gear, the cross wind block, uh, push the shaft up and push the shaft down, which the spool rides on, and that's what travels up and down to give line lay. If you take a look at this spool, um, I didn't just spool this, you can see it's kind of low. It's almost perfect. Um, hopefully you can see that, I don't know if I should pull it back a little bit, but to me it's almost flawless. This is the 3000 size, I believe, yeah, 3,000 size. I got 20 pound Cortland Master Braid on here. Um, I've been fishing this since last May when I got it. First spooling, I've never changed the line. Um, and you can see it is perfect. So what they've done is with the oscillation system, they have slowed how fast that, that spool travels top to bottom. And what that has done is it gives the line lay um, from a more of a radical crisscross like this, bring it down to something like this, so it's more level um, and more kind of true throughout the top to bottom. Um, and if you notice, even all the way up on the spool lip, on the top of the spool and on the bottom of the spool, there's no like random drop off. And sometimes you'll see that on a spool. Um, the oscillation system is kind of out of wonk or whatever it is. Sometimes you need to shim underneath the spool. Certain reels need to be shimmed up a little bit to kind of level that line out. Um, this is straight out of the box, perfect line lay for me, for my rod. Uh, I use a Lama Glass Black Series. Uh, it is a 7320, I believe. It's a seven foot three. I believe it's half to one ounce. It's an awesome reel. The, the Black Series from, from, from Lamy's top notch, top quality for the price, unbeatable. 
And this is kind of a reel I put on there and I've fished for the last year um, and a number of my customers have fished. I've got two of these outfits, two, two 3000s, two of those 7320s. Uh, and this is what I fish a lot of bucktails on. I catch albies on them, um, catch a lot of striped bass and uh, I've actually caught some pretty big bluefish on here. Um, I'm not sure who's on here that might've charred me, but there might be some guys on here that have actually fished this reel and, and, and used it. Um, if you have, give me a thumbs up. Cool. If you haven't, no sweat. Um, but one of the, yeah, one of the things like the, the, this really stands apart from the, its predecessors in the pen series is that slow oscillation. And I don't want to miss kind of represent that as a long cast spool. It's not a long cast spool. It's a standard, um, spool. It's just they used that idea from the long cast, which is a slow oscillation, into the series to better that line lay. Now, what does that actually do for you? Okay, so when a cast takes place, a lot of the energy, a lot of the cast is dependent on the rod and the lure. That's all good and, 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 and happy. But what happens is when you have a reel with a radical line lay like this, you'll get more resistance uh, when that line is deeper down the spool. Uh, because what happens is you're getting more void in, in the actual base of line. If your line's stacked up like cordwood, very, very nice and neat like it is here, you get a much better packing of line. And when it casts, it comes off in a much more organized fashion. If you get it more radical like this, it's almost like stacking cordwood up all gnarly. And then what you have is a bunch of voids and one, you don't get as nice of a base or foundation of line lay. And two, I believe, you can debate, argue over whatever you want to do. I believe you get more resistance on this lip of the spool when it's coming off. Um, so I feel this slow oscillation helps with wind knots. I can't tell you one scenario or one story that I can remember having this reel in the past year and having a wind knot. I grab this reel, I hand it to a customer, sometimes the person doesn't know how to cast, Sometimes they're veteran anglers. Uh, I see all walks of life. And I just kind of say, flip that bale open and flip it out there. Um, once it hits the water, flip the bale and start cranking. And most of the time that plug's swimming or that bucktail's kind of cruising in the current and, and customers catch fish. Um, I can't remember one time it's had a wind knot. I'm not saying it's wind knot proof. There's lots of other things to get into wind knots, which I think um, is, is maybe for another talk. Um, but th this reel is definitely, I have confidence in it, handing it to anybody and say, hey, here, flip the bail cast, game on. A um, couple other features I really like about this reel, other than it, those three very important things, um, is obviously it's, it's super sleek, it's super stealthy. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the colorway. It's kind of like that blacked out, um, kind of midnight kind of look to it. It, to me, look, looks really sexy. Um, it has a nice handle. You can kind of see I got some salt caked up in there. Um, I get these reels and I don't take care of them. I'm not trying to um, have like longevity out of it. I'm trying to break these things. Uh, a lot of times I actually get a brand new reel, I'll put it in the salt water uh, when I first jump my boat and get it wet. And I won't wash the thing for weeks on end. Uh, specifically to say, hey, Penn, my thing corroded out in a month because some customers get their stuff and they drop them in the water. Uh, they put it in the gunnel rather than in another spot in the boat when they're running and it's getting wet all the time. So my idea is why not, if I'm field testing, why not try to trash it? Um, if it's a surf reel, it's getting salt, it's getting sand on its first day out. Um, so you'll see this reel's got some kind of areas here being a year old, um, kind of caked up in there. I'm sure if I take the spool off or some caked up stuff here and there. Um, but one thing I really, really like about the reel is its drag range. I know I mentioned the drag before, but I really like how much range it has and fine tunability. And a lot of reels from Penn have that, but there are some reels in the marketplace that don't have that fine tunability. I hate a reel that's very radical where I wanna give it a click or two and have just a little bit more or a little bit less um, drag tension. So to me, it's very, very fine tunable to you know, a very, you know, almost perfect for what I want. Um, and that to me is very important if you're fluke fishing, sometimes if you're weak fishing uh, and also fishing for false albacore, I think you want a drag that's smooth uh, and also fine tunable. You definitely don't want a herky-jerky drag or drag that takes a lot of uh, power at the get-go to get turning and then all of a sudden it becomes loose or smooth. 
Um, one of the reasons for that smooth drag is like I mentioned, the HT100 drag washers, but it's also this bearing here. And you'll see that it's actually a pretty large bearing. Not sure if you can see that clearly, but a lot of reels have that bearing. Um, not all do, but, but most do. And if you take a look here, I don't, I didn't see it in the descriptions that, that Penn put out. This was a year ago, but also now with, now that's hitting the market. And now that I'm allowed to share information about this reel, if you look, it's actually blue. I don't know if you could tell that little, that little shade. 90% of the time I see a blue shielded bearing, um, it's sealed. So I believe that's a sealed bearing. And that's great because if you think about it, yeah, this spools over top of it kind of giving it some splash protection, but nothing stopping water, salt, sand from kind of getting up underneath that spool when it's sitting down and getting that bearing wet. And then if you don't see it, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. It corrodes up and, and kind of gunks up and, and goes bunk on you. And you wonder why you have a herky jerky drag or why you're, you're, you know, your first cast one session, let's say you, you go out for a month fishing it hard, you take off a, a month and then you go back out in your first session, first fish, boop, it pops. Well, guess what? The bearing locked up, it got corroded, you know, it sat around for a month, it, it froze up, it's rusted. First fish, you didn't check your drag and pop, it, 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 you know, your line broke. Um, you kind of see here, it, it's a classic drag from Penn, super easy to fix, uh, super easy to replace. If you ever wanted to clean it, replace it. Uh, just has a retaining ring. You could pull out that whole drag stack, drop a new stack in there, or even take that stack out, clean them up, put them back in. You also see on that drag cap, uh, has a seal, Keep some of the gunk and grime, some water out. Um, it's really not that important, but I think I might want to share it. Um, a lot of people have issues putting their spools back on reels. So if you take a look, that's keyed. See how it's got like a square and you see how this has a flat section to it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's got a flat section. I'm trying to turn it in the light here so you kind of tell, but there's a flat section. So sometimes customers buy a drag knob. Right, this is a drag knob part number 52, um, which we sell tons of. And they'll buy it and they'll say, Hey man, you sent me the wrong drag knob, it doesn't work. Um, well, in fact, it is the right drag knob, but the problem is they don't have the spool seated all the way. So, one of the things I want to tell you is if you do seat your drag, you want to put it on there, you want to make sure it clicks, right? If it doesn't click, that means that that little piece underneath there, that, that little clicker, isn't you know running on. I'll just call it its click mechanism. Um, if you run into the issue where you put it on and it won't click and it's kind of being wonky and it's not sitting down, super, super simple fix. Take a look at the spool, take a look at the stack, and if you notice that they're not all aligned and keyed right, you got to arrange them correctly. And the way to do that is you grab your, your shaft, that's this, on your reel, and you plop it in there and you kind of do a little jingle. And as it enters in, it aligns all of those because you're kind of turning it through them. And now they're all aligned. You turn it around this way and voila. Every time it drops right on. Um, if it doesn't, do it again. Pull it off, get it aligned, drop it on, and should be back in the game. Um, never, ever, ever put the, sp the spool's drag knob on without first turning this to make sure it's clicking, making sure it's fully seated. And also when you put it on, you always want to put this on in a loose fashion. Uh, you don't ever want to cross thread, which I might have just done. Uh, no, you don't ever want to cross thread this, uh, which is somewhat easy on a drag knob. Put it on. Sometimes you want to do a couple turns in reverse so it kind of comes off and jumps back into the spot and then let it enter onto the threads and bring it down. And also one thing I never ever do is, is fully seat this into a locked up position without first checking it in a lighter um, mode. So I kind of, like, as I tweak it, I kind of turn it and I feel that the drag's slowly increasing and it's properly seated and I'm not one, cross-threading things, or two, bending those drag washers if they weren't seated. It kind of bends them out of whack. Um, two very, very common issues. When one, a customer buys a brand new reel and puts a line on for themselves and isn't fully um, paying attention to what they're doing or not informed of what they're doing. Um, just something to look out for. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, if you guys got some questions, fire them over. I see Max is uh, interacting some, so I appreciate that. Anybody doesn't know, Max is the main man at the shop. Uh, he makes the keeps the dream alive, makes it all happen. Uh, so thank you, Max, for answering some questions. I, I didn't want to get my head too far off topic as I'm rambling about this reel. Um, while I'm still rambling about this reel, one of the cool features I like is the EVA knob. I'm not a fan of round knobs personally. 
Um, I really like that pinched kind of paddle. Um, and this is EVA, which to me is very, very comfortable. It's very light. Um, it's great when it's cold. It's great when it's wet. Um, and to me, it's lightweight, so it, you can't beat it. So yeah, that's basically the Clash 2. Um, yeah, so this is the Clash 2, uh, just for Pat. This just came out recently. Um, we should have them in stock this week. I shot a real simple video the other day when I got off the water. Um, I'm probably gonna post that on YouTube here, maybe today or tomorrow. Um, so if you wanna check that video out, cool. I'm basically gonna say the same stuff I just said now. This is probably actually a little more in depth. Um, so I appreciate you guys jumping on and following along. Um, RJ, the main difference between this and the Slammer is this is more of a light tackle reel. The Slammer is gonna be a, more of a beefier, um, say mid, mid to, to heavy spin tackle. Um, if you're looking for a reel that's gonna have a lot of seals, the slammer is gonna have more seals than this. Um, if you're looking for a reel that's, that's gonna have kind of a more of a light tackle approach, um, let's say a, a reel for fluke fishing, um, for light tackle striped bass fishing, say albacore, um, let's not leave the guys out in the southeast. Maybe they're flounder fishing, uh, maybe they're looking for puppy drum, um, speckled trout, fishing small jigs. Maybe it's smaller snook and, and redfish. Um, you know, depending on exactly what you guys are doing, where you're at, this series in like the one, two, three, four thousand series is is a gem for all that light tackle stuff. Uh, I think if you're gonna say, hey, what would you use the slammer for? It'd be the kind of the bigger game stuff or or heavier tackle. Um, I've caught a ton of tog on this reel. I just wanted to see how these gears would hold up. I wouldn't suggest this reel as like the quote unquote tog reel. It's held up great for me. Um, I think the 4500 uh, would be a better option from, from the Slammer uh, the Slammer series. You can get a kind of beefier handle, not as lightweight as this one. Uh, they have like an all aluminum handle, uh, which, which toggers tend to bend handles, just kind of crank it and, 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 and lift and fish. Um, I think the, the Slammer might be a better idea if you're looking to jig tune and stuff like that. Uh, or even if you're trying to surf fish with, say, a 9, 10, 11 foot rod. But this thing is awesome for light tackle fishing. We're talking 10, 15, 20, 30 pound braid, uh, fishing 10, 12 pound mono, something like that. So as far as the specs, if you wanna get into the fancy stuff, I didn't really mention it. Um, this does have eight ball bearings and the one roller bearing, which I mentioned, the clutch. And um, I think this holds like 200 yards of 30 pound. I could look it up, it really doesn't even matter uh, you know, in all reality. I mean, Every reel in today's day, fishing braid holds more than enough line. So line capacity to me really isn't, isn't a concern. It's all about um, those problem points that I mentioned and how a, a reel addresses those problem points before you actually buy it. You know, say, hey, I've had a problem with this, this, and this. Will this reel give me those problems in six months, one year, five years? Uh, and that's something that I really feel that this reel does. Um, it addresses a lot of those problem points and kind of gives you a little somewhat of an of, of a easier mind going into the purchase of say a two to three hundred dollar reel. This is two to two fifty depending on size, um, knowing that you're gonna have that longevity. So once again, I got this last May, fished the living hell out of it, uh, caught a bunch of tog, I'd say tog up to, say reasonably like eight pounds. Uh, maybe I had some bigger fish than that. Caught a bunch of albies on this, a uh, bunch of schoolie striped bass and bluefish, um, mostly smaller blues. I can share a photo uh, I'm sure I have it on my computer here somewhere, um, like a 12 pound blue, maybe even 13 pound blue fish that I had in a charter. A uh, guy hooked it on this guy, fishing a little plug one morning. We were catching schoolie bass. Big old gator blue kind of came up and ate this thing down. And uh, this thing held up great. So once again, brand new reel from Penn. It's the Penn Clash 2. Uh, it's a great reel for inshore fishing. If you guys wanna check them out, we'll have them at Fisherman's Headquarters. Uh, they're listed on our website right now, fishermansheadquarters.com. Go up to the search bar, you can type in Clash 2, should come up. You'll see some features, you'll be able to buy them there. And as soon as they come in, they'll, we'll ship them out to you. Um, if you do have questions on it, feel free to reach out. Um, if you don't have questions on it and wanna buy one, awesome, make it happen. Um, we'll definitely get it to you as soon as possible. If you've got some concerns with your existing reel and maybe you wanna upgrade, awesome. Um, if you've got concerns with your reel and you don't wanna upgrade, you wanna repair it, maybe buy a part. If it's a pen, we can definitely help you out. We're a pen warranty center. We also do real service and we also sell pen real parts. So hopefully we can help you out. Once again, it's Greg at Fisherman's Headquarters. Um, I'm gonna browse through here, see if there's any questions. 
And if there's not, maybe I'll check out, maybe I'll ramble about a couple other things. So what up, Adis? Uh, it's awesome, Gear Up Surf Casting's on here, sweet. How we doing? Um, Shear says 25 Parker for the win. Yeah, trying to, uh, trying to do a little upgrade as we speak here. Um, so cool, it looks like um, most of these questions are answered. Uh, Allison, the size on this is the 3000, this is the Clash 2. Uh, the new Pen Clash series, uh, size 3000. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is there's two sizes in this series that are available on a high speed. You'll see there's a red accent. This one doesn't have it. This is the, the sleek kind of uh, standard reel that's gonna be black and, and gunmetal. If you see the reels that have the red accents, those are the high speed reels. Uh, the exact gear ratio, I don't know. I can look it up for you if you really wanna know. Um, it would be the 3000 HS has a seven to one gear ratio, where this one has a 6.2. To me, not that big of a deal, but if you want the red reel, awesome. It's got some little red red accents up here on the spool. It's a cool looking reel. Uh, this one did just fine for me. And also the 4000 HS, that's also um, the seven to one. Um, the biggest size they make this in is a 5000. The smallest size they make it in is a 1000. Once again, is the 3000. So hopefully a couple of those points I talked about um, kind of helped you with some issues that you commonly see with reels. Um, if you didn't catch that part, maybe you want to check it out, do a little rewind, maybe watch it again. Uh, I'll try my best to get this video onto YouTube uh, for archival purposes so you can look at it in the future. Um, definitely had a little trouble with that. Sometimes Instagram is good to me, sometimes it's not. So hopefully the feed, the audio, and the video is good. Uh, last time it wasn't quite so good. So sorry about that. Um, Couple things I want to touch base on. Tog is closed. Um, Tog closed at the end of April. Today's May, so hopefully those April showers bring May flowers, and we start seeing some fish popping up. Um, with Tog being closed, we get a common kind of set of emails that say, "What in the hell can I fish for now if I'm a land-based angler?" The stripers really haven't showed up in good numbers yet. I mean, there's still a good amount of schoolies in the bay. Um, Really not much off the beach. Uh, checked in with a few friends that, that fish the beach regularly, and they're they're still struggling. Uh, putting some time in. There was one really nice fish that, that we know that was caught. A uh, guy stops in the shop all the time. I'm terrible at names. He works at Sunny's Recycling Center. Uh, he got a nice fish the other day off the beach, which was cool. Other than that, the only other report I had was from Chris Messino, which I reported way back when. Um, if you guys want to check out the fishing report, fishinglbi.com. I try to keep that up to date as possible. That is the fisherman's headquarters fishing report kind of location. Uh, if you wanted to call and ask for fish report, that's cool. Do me a favor, first check out Fishing LBI. You'll have names, general locations, sort of some timelines of dates, when this all went down. Um, try to put as much information there as possible. Try to give you that information so you can kind of see a trend, kind of see how a season's progressing, kind of see how certain areas are progressing, how certain species are arriving or leaving. Um, and I'll let you guys kind of take that information and, and, and do what you do what you wish. Um, maybe you want to kind of chase that report um, and kind of fish that same town that I reported because I, I stay away from the exact spot burns. Uh, or maybe you want to take that and, and take it to the next level and use that information to say, hey, how can I use that information to help me tomorrow or help me next week? I noticed two weeks ago there was nothing going on here. I went a couple times. It was terrible. Well, he just reported there's a couple fish there. Maybe I should check it out. But... Maybe I should also look over here. These fish might be starting to stage up in a new area. Um, so hopefully that helps you out. There's also a number of other captains on there that provide some really, really good information. Um, there'll be a fluke blog post coming up really soon. The five W's to early season fluke fishing. The who, what, when, where, why, how. Um, that's from Kevin Schmid from Old Barty Charters. Awesome guy. Um, he runs a light tackle charter out of Barnegat Light. And he wrote this blog for us that we're going to send live here soon. Um, if you're kind of fed up with the quarantine and you want to do some reading, I just actually posted a blog yesterday. It kind of took me a while to write um, something that was on my on my plate. And then I kind of put it on the back burner or sort of things that popped up, which was something about the six things to do uh, while stuck at home or something like that. Like six awesome stay at home projects. Um, so hopefully you guys cleaned up your stuff if you didn't. And you're looking to kind of get into some fishing tackle, you know, time burning. If you're not ready to fish yet, if your boat's not in, or if you're saying, hey, I'm waiting for the run to show up. Um, don't wait too long because there's plenty of fish here. And uh, there's some really good fishing going on in certain areas in the state. 
Raritan Bay would be one of them, but there's also a lot of fish locally in certain areas. Uh, check out that fish report and definitely point you in the right direction. Um, but yeah, if you want to read that blog, it's up live. It'll talk about tying some rigs. And based on that, I've already got emails about guys asking, hey, what kind of rigs do you tie? How do you fluke fish? So that's already one idea we have penciled in for a future uh, Instagram Live. And um, another thing was about replacing rusty hooks. Now's the time. You don't want to uh, be playing around rusty hooks this month in May. Um, some of the bigger breeders come around, the big cows. And if you're going to lose that one fish or those two fish or those two bites, um, it could ruin your, your spring. So I would strongly suggest getting your stuff in order now if you haven't. Uh, to me, May 15th to June 1st is always that prime time season when we really see the biggest fish here on LBI. Uh, we see them in the bay, we see them in the inlet, we see them along the surf. Um, I know there's some guys that are already out there trolling, looking for, for some fish along the beaches here of LBI on Beach Day Park. I have not heard any positive reports. Uh, I can tell you our bunker boat does uh, some gill netting of uh, dogfish, and he actually has caught some big gator blues recently. He was a little further off, wasn't like on the beach, so I don't want to sound like big gator blues the beach. I'm not blowing that whistle just yet. Uh, but there were gator blues landed uh, at the commercial dock in Barnegat Light two days ago. So if you want to start looking for them, I would say now's the time. Great news, tomorrow, May 2nd, Barnegat Light State Park, the lighthouse uh, parking lot will be open. It's been closed for some time due to the pandemic uh, and the closures. It's definitely a great spot to look for TOG. Too bad it's closed. You can go catch and release them if you want. Striped bass, all spring, all summer, all fall. Uh, great spot to look for bluefish as well. Um, if you're looking to go, I would strongly suggest looking, the fishing, looking to fish the outgoing tide. Outgoing tides can be much, much warmer than the incoming. Uh, right now, you probably should have right around 50 degree mark, maybe 52 on the outgoing, and you'll probably have 48 to 50 on the incoming. Um, I expect these water temps to jump um, in the next couple of days. We got some sunny weather. Today was beautiful. Hopefully, you guys got out and, and experienced that. I, I kind of was roaming around about in and out of town, um, was going to jump in for a surf and kind of got tied up with doing some other things, but definitely for sure tomorrow, I'm going to get some good surf in. Um, and I'll definitely roam around, might, might do a little fishing too. Um, so yeah, I haven't seen many questions come in. Uh, shout out to South Philly Fred with the rusty hooks. No, no. Uh, thank you for the comment now, but also do big thanks for uh, jumping on last time. That was a, a cool interaction we had. I know a lot of people gave us some awesome feedback. Um, yeah, absolutely. Blue fish will be here soon. I wish I could hit a, hit a thumbs up to that one. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing there, but uh, I appreciate you guys jumping on here. Uh, once again, Clash 2 is going to be in stock any day now. If you want to check them out, we've got them at Fisherman's Headquarters probably this upcoming week. Um, hopefully you guys get out and fish and have an awesome time. Um, there's fish around, and I strongly suggest getting out and having some fun, but doing it in a safe, safe way. Uh, there's no need to kind of be irresponsible in this time. There's too many people putting their lives at risk. But I don't see anything wrong with getting out, socially distancing, and enjoying some time in the water, um, doing it solo, getting some mental health, um, whether it's checking out the sunrise, making a few casts, hopping on the boat, enjoying a nice day, or, or fishing sunset, or doing the night shift all night. So good luck to you guys this spring. Uh, if you guys have any questions, have any problems, have any issues, you need help, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'd love to help you. Um, C. La Rosa, what lure would you recommend for outgoing tide of the inline stripers? First and foremost, man, I'd be fishing a bucktail. I would fish a two ounce bucktail on the outgoing tide when it's, when it's a swift moving current. Um, fish it slow and low. Every once in a while, I'll touch down on bottom. Um, if you happen to hang up and lose one, you're fishing a little bit too slow um, or the current's slowing down and you need to fish a lighter weight. Other than that, I would throw an SP minnow uh, or a popper. Um, those would be my three suggestions. If you wanted to throw a big metal, and really reach out and get some distance um, and fish down deep, you could fish like a three or four ounce Hopkins. Just don't put that on a, on a noodle nine foot plugging rod. Uh, three or four ounce Hopkins are well known for, for cracking rods in half. Um, they're just big and they cast like brutes. And when you load them up, um, they cast like rocket ships. So it's, it's definitely something if you wanna reach out, a two, three ounce, uh, even four ounce Hopkins is, is a great lure. Uh, another one I really, really like is a Castmaster. 
Uh, the three ounce cast master also cast masters named for a reason things launch. Um, they reach out and they, they have a really good swimming action in the water and they resemble a peanut bunker, a shorter, chubbier bait very well. Um, you can get them out good distance. They penetrate and get down. But when they start coming back up closer to you, you can really fish it much slower than most three ounce lures because it's wide. It starts to plane up. Um, Certain lures like a diamond jig, yeah, you can, but you got to start fishing them quick when they start getting close. Um, the Hopkins is, in my opinion, a little bit better than the diamond jig, but the Castmaster I really like to use in the inlets, fishing them slow. Uh, shout out to um, uh, George Green. He turned me on to fishing some big metals. Uh, he also turned me on to fishing some big needlefish in the inlet. Uh, so thank you to him. He definitely fished me under the table numerous times, whether it's night after night or day after day. Um, he's an old salty feller, got a ton of experience fishing up in Montauk and, and the South Shore of Long Island, and he's fished LBI for got to be 50 years. Um, so he's a, definitely an old salty guy that, that's fished the hell out of the beaches and really, really knows his stuff. And he turned me on to the Castmaster, um, the three ounce in particular, uh, with a single bucktail hook, uh, sometimes I'll put a jig strip on there. Used to fish Uncle Josh pork around on there if you want to give a little bigger presentation. Um, but if you don't want to, you don't have to fish it. You can fish it straight up just as it is. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. And that question was uh, to C. La Rosa. So stoked that you're interacting, man. I saw you on a couple other videos. You sent some messages. So, so thank you for that. Um, I appreciate the questions. Um, stoked Rob says he's hitting the, the surf with some plug this week. Best of luck to you, brother. Uh, shout out to, to Steve George, Night Strikes. Thanks, buddy, for writing that blog for us. Uh, anyone wants to check out a blog about the transition of spring, um, Steve George, Night Strikes, Surf Casting. Uh, wrote an awesome, awesome article for us. You can find it on fishinglbi.com about the transition from kind of winter to summer, that springtime transition of how things take place from the real small lures and small fish to the bigger baits and bigger fish and how the fish show up and, and how kind of things progress in, in, in springtime. Um, definitely big thumbs up to South Philly Fred, 80 pound fluorocarbon on that bucktail. Perfect, man. That's what I use. Uh, I like fluorocarbon. It's a little bit harder than a, than a classic mono. Um, I don't use it because I think it's invisible to the fish. I use that in other applications. Um, but in particular, bluefish, they're toothy. I personally don't like fishing wire. Um, just Just personal opinion. I mean, it, it it works, but I, I don't like fishing wire. Um, I like to step up to 80 pound fluoro and I find that you can catch a fish or two. If it gets chafed up, you see it's it's gnarled, cut it and, and get that replaced. Um, thanks, Freddie. I'm, I'm looking forward to some, some pat steaks, dude. That'd be awesome. Uh, so I don't see many questions coming in. Uh, I don't want to kind of ramble and, and just go on and on, but I appreciate you guys checking out the Clash 2. Hopefully you got some good information. Like I said, I, I spent a year fishing this, uh, really beating the balls off it, and it, it's really held up well for me. I really don't have anything bad to say. Um, if you want to check them out, we've got them. Uh, we'll, we will have them this week. If you got questions, feel free to reach out, give a call, send a message. Um, have a good night. Best of luck fishing.